Oh, hello. I didn't see you there. I've been busy arming myself with this monitor arm. So before you get up in arms about that intro, let's talk about boom arms because these have been recurring characters on my channel for a while now, but I never made the leap to use these, well not these, but different ones for my computer display. And I know putting your computer's display on an articulating arm isn't a new thing, but for some reason it has not been in my brain as something that's possible, I don't know why. And it wasn't until our friend Peter TC said that he had put his display on an arm and it cleared up his desk and he had a similar streaming video production podcasting setup to me that then finally the light bulb went off. So then I spent a bit of time looking into arms. I got one, I use it, I love it. That's what I'm telling you about today. Usually when I do reviews and things, I kind of say like, here is a product. Look, it's a microphone, it sounds like this. Maybe you'll think it's good for you, maybe you won't think it's good for you. And this is sort of the same, except that there's much more of the I think you should get this because it will change everything if you're not already using it. So for me, having my computer display on an arm solves three big problems. The first of which is just desk space. And I was desperate for more space. And if you wanna know exactly which arm I got and which monitor I use, you can check the links in the description for those. Sorry. But even though my display stand isn't very big, it does take up space and it kind of has a curved base, which means it's really difficult to put something like the Rodecaster or the ATEM under it because it just, like the angles don't work quite right. So there's this whole end of my desk over here that I'm just sort of not really been able to use because that's where the computer's display is, which then as you might've seen in my full desk setup video that I did, the roadcaster has to be kind of off over to the side, which means when I'm streaming or doing podcasting, I'm always kind of reaching over here and making adjustments. And it's, it's just sort of difficult. It hasn't been like super ergonomic. And when I need to film, I kind of have to like lean over to this side of the desk because everything's taken up over here. So having more desk space is a big plus. And that also goes into the second problem that this solves, which is just comfort while working because I'm trying to clear up my space, my monitor's been over here, which means while I'm working, I'm usually turning at a weird angle or I'm turning my neck and it's just, it's not good for posture, for your body to be in those positions for long periods of time. And if I wanted to stand, it was always hard to kind of position the monitor in a way where I could still see everything, which then also leads into the third problem that this solves, and that is working with a monitor while filming. And I've sort of been at the center of this battle that's been going on for a long time where Positioning my camera where I want it for a camera shot makes it hard to position my monitor where I want it to work. And so if the camera is in a place that looks good, the monitor is in a place that's tough to use. If the monitor is in a place that's easy to use, it covers up and gets in the way of the camera. And so I'm always never quite happy with either of those situations. And this solves all of those problems because now I have plenty of desk space since I don't have the stand on the desk. I can now put my roadcaster right here so when I'm streaming or doing something, I have full control over that. Plenty of room for the ATEM, plenty of room for other stuff if I need other stuff to be here. I also now have tons of flexibility in being able to position the monitor right where I want it, either low or high. So when I'm working, I can be at a good angle and it's directly in front of me. If I want to stand up and do work, I can raise the monitor up and tilt it so that way it's still super comfortable and I can be standing, I don't have to sit all day. And when it's time to film, I can just push the entire thing out of the way and I can even flail my arms like a crazy person and it doesn't matter because I'm not gonna hit my screen or anything and that actually ends up helping my audio a little bit because at one point in time, I thought having the monitor here was sort of helping to reduce some reverb in the room, but the more I listen back to my audio, the more I realize that it is a hard surface that sound is just bouncing off of, and it's sort of, it is kind of eliminating some reverb, but it's also causing some other problems. So by now just pushing it over there, it's totally out of the way. Plus, a lot of times when it's here, depending on what I have on screen, it colors my face. So if I have like a blue background, Suddenly I look really blue and kind of sickly. If I have a really bright pink background or, or like window going, then I sort of look weirdly colored. So it's, it's always been sort of an issue having this light source right there. But now that's not an issue because I can just push it off to the side and it's totally out of the way. Yay. 
Now when it comes to the specific equipment that I'm using, the monitor arm that I got was from a brand called AVLT and it is a single 13 inch to 38 inch monitor desk arm. I did a bit of research. I didn't want the cheapest option. I also didn't want to spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars on the most expensive options. This seemed to be a good spot in the middle where it was sturdy. It didn't take up a lot of space. I like the way that it mounted to the desk and it seemed to have all the flexibility and articulation that I wanted. Now my computer monitor itself is the LG 34WN80C-B, a very catchy name that's super easy to remember and I definitely didn't have to read off a screen just now. But basically this is LG's least expensive 34 inch curved ultra wide monitor. And I really like it. So it's, it's worked great for me. It's relatively affordable. Actually, geez, I don't know. I'll put a link in the description. The price right now is like $300 more than I paid for it. I was able to get it for like $500 at the end of 2020. And now it seems more expensive. So I don't know. I'll put a link in the description. You can figure that out if you're interested in it. The colors on this monitor were pretty good. They were okay out of the box. However, I did end up using this Data Color Spider X Pro, which is a calibration thing. So pretty much this just attaches to the front of your screen and it helps calibrate and read the colors. And then you can dial in a profile that works for you. So I was able to get this to be pretty accurate. It's not at like pro level cinema reference display or anything, but for the most part, what I make on here is how it's gonna look when I upload it or print it out. So it seems like it's pretty accurate so far and it's worked really well for me since and I really, really like it. It's not the heaviest monitor in the world, so I know I didn't need the biggest monitor arm, but the one I got ended up being rated at 26 pounds, which is pretty heavy. This does not weigh anywhere near 26 pounds. And the way that it attaches to your desk is very similar to something like the Rode PSA1, where there's a clamp that just goes on the edge. And then instead of something on the bottom that you tighten, which can sometimes come loose over time, there's actually like an Allen key that you use to tighten something that's in the stem of the base and it raises and lowers the bottom part, which to me just makes it feel a lot more secure and a lot less likely to come loose over time. It does have a rubber grip on the bottom part that touches the bottom of your desk and the part that goes on the top of your desk also has little rubber feet. However, the one problem I noticed, which might not be a problem, is that the screw that you're turning is very sharp and I don't think it's low enough to actually touch the desk because when you turn it, the screw doesn't raise or lower, it's just the bottom part of the clamp that moves. However, just to make sure that it didn't damage the desk at all, I did put a little soft felt pad there so that way I wouldn't be damaging my tabletop. This desk that I use is actually a workbench so its top is a little over one inch thick and this stand is rated for a two inch thick desk. So that's really thick if you have a desk that that's, <laughs> that's that wide. And obviously you do need a lip at the edge of your desk so that way it can attach to it. If you just have a flat sided desk, it's gonna be a little tougher. And then basically to put it on the back of your monitor, pretty much every display has the standard mounts and this comes with little thumb screws that you can use if you wanna take it on and off really easily. It comes with regular screws if you want it to be more permanent and chances are your display already has screws in the back of it that you can use. So I didn't end up using any of the ones that came with the stand. I just used the ones that my display already had. And once you attach the plate to your display, it just clips into the mount on the arm itself. And if you wanna remove it, there's just a little tab that you open and then the monitor kind of slides out out. It was not very hard to put this on and put this all together by myself. I didn't feel like I was going to damage the monitor or tip it over. Since my display is curved, it was easy to just set up even without the base, screw the back part on it, and then just put it on the arm. It was pretty simple. And then this is all gas powered, not gas powered, <laughs> it doesn't have a motor, gas spring tension. <laughs> what a gas, yes. And basically at each point of the arm, there's an adjustment you can make. So if you want the part that swings out like this, you can adjust that tension. If you want the part that goes up and down, you can adjust that tension. Where the monitor actually mounts, you have a left and right. It also rotates and tilts up and down and you can adjust that tension as well. The way that they say to do that is to pull the monitor out so that it's just horizontal and then adjust the tension just so that it doesn't start drooping. So wherever your monitor would start just sagging on its own, make it just tight enough so it doesn't do that. 
I will say that on the main tension arm, on the back of the arm, there's a little cover you undo, and then there's a plus or minus, and that's sort of the main like height adjustment. I was scared and turning it like two or three times and it wasn't doing anything. I needed to loosen that like 40 times, like 40 turns before it started becoming more usable and more adjustable. So I bring that up just in case you get this and you feel like this won't move at all, the tension's way too tight. Don't be afraid to turn those screws a lot to accommodate the size and weight of your specific display. And from there, it's been working great. There's a little channel to kind of keep your cables organized. Since you are moving your monitor around a lot, it's very important to be sure that you allow enough cable room. If you have the monitor back close to your computer and all your cables are tight and then you try to pull it forward, that's gonna cause some problems. So you need to have some slack in your cables and your power cords and stuff so that way you can actually move the monitor wherever you need to move it. I cannot tell you how much this has improved my workflow and just made things much more enjoyable. The fact that when I'm filming and doing stuff, I don't need to have a computer monitor in my face that I'm not gonna use. I can keep my Rodecaster and my equipment right here at the ready. And when it's time for me to actually work on something, I can just position this exactly where I need it so that I feel super comfortable the whole time I'm working and I don't feel like I'm hurting my neck or my back or anything like that. And speaking of arms, do you know where the general keeps his armies? In his sleeves. But my main point for making this video is just to highlight how great it is to have something like this because anytime you can make, if there's friction in your workflow or your workspace and you can kind of iron out some of those wrinkles, it's a really nice thing. And this was such a big game changer for a relatively affordable price and a couple minutes of setup. If you haven't looked into putting your computer's display on an articulating arm, I definitely recommend it. I've really been liking the arm that I bought but obviously there's a whole bunch out there so you can find the one that's best for you. And if throughout this video you've kind of got questions or become curious about the rest of my desk setup, don't worry because I've got you set up with this desk setup video right here.